done one more each day.
license now that he has a uh, dog. But <coughs> anyway, but we want to welcome them, and I want to welcome you to church this Sabbath. So may you have a blessed day. Enjoy worship in Jesus' name. Amen. I forgot one more thing. No, come on for your praise team. Don't worry about me. Just come up here. Let's all stand. And let's pray as we begin worship. Father in heaven, thank you so much for being with us here this week. Many of us have had a good week, some of us a bad week, some of us a tough week, some of us are just done with the week. Uh, but nevertheless, Lord, you have brought us here together in the beauty of your holiness to worship you. So Father, we ask that you would come and fill this room with your presence, fill this room with your love, and that we may experience the joy of knowing Jesus once again, in Jesus' name.
Sabbath. How are you doing today? All right, so today I'm going to have um, the prayer, and I'm taking a page from um, Ray's book with the surprises and whatnot. So <laughs> I, I, I was just told to have the prayer, and so I looked up on Google, um, like I said, following Ray <laughs> from last week, um, for the basically a, a, an all-inclusive prayer. So what I came across was the five-finger prayer. And I remember because uh, when I was in elementary school, we used to, we used to do this, this prayer. So it's um, the five fingers. So the first one is the thumb, so the closest to you. So your family, your closest friends, um, fellow church members, so that is the thumb. So then the pointer, um, those are uh, the people who point you in the right direction. So teachers, doctors, pastors, um, those that you go to for uh, wisdom and support. Um, the index, uh, which is the tallest, uh, these are the people that lead us. So um, government, um, you know, and even some people who would like are like community leaders, all of those. Um, the ring finger, uh, which is the weakest, and this is our, the prayer for those who are in need, um, those who are in pain, those can, who cannot pray for themselves at the moment. And then the pinky, which is the smallest, and that is ourselves. So what we're going to be praying for today, so each one can have their own individual prayer first, it's going to be the closest to us, um, those who lead us in the right direction, uh, those that uh, govern or lead us, uh, like government-wise or city-wise, um, the the weakest. I feel like I skipped one. Did I? No, <laughs> the weakest, and then us, the smallest. So everyone, you can go ahead and have your prayer, and then I'll have a general prayer. Heavenly Father, at this moment, we want to thank you, first of all, for bringing us here. Thank you um, because you brought us through this week and you have brought us to this place so that we can uh, worship you together. At this moment, we want to ask, Lord, uh, for five different groups. Uh, the first group is uh, those who are closest to us, our family members, uh, or friends. We want to ask you to be with them, to bless them, to prosper them, to let them know that you are always by their side, Lord. We want to ask you for the people who are in our lives, who, who guide us, who give us wisdom, who lead us closer to you with their words, with their encouragement. Um, we want to ask that you continue to lift them, continue to give them the words um, that we need every day so um, for encouragement and, and to help us strive. I um, want to ask you, Lord, for the, the people who govern us, the leaders, the government, uh, city officials, uh, those who are in charge of making uh, the laws that we follow, we ask that you be with them, that you help um, them center on the betterment of people uh, and not so much in power or greed, but in creating a better nation for all of us where everyone can feel safe and, and accepted. We ask you, Lord, for those who are the weakest, we ask that you be with them, those who are suffering, those who are in hospitals, those who are 
um, going through the loss of, of a family member, loss of a job, uh, those who feel like they cannot pray for themselves at the moment, we want to ask you that you give them the strength to go forward, that you help them to understand that even at their lowest moment, you are there. And lastly, Lord, we want to ask you for ourselves. Help us to grow every day. Um, help us to be closer to you. Help us to be open to people, to the community, to those around us, so that they can see your son, Jesus Christ, in us every single day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. 
for being you, Lord. Thank you that in the midst of every storm, of every trial, we know that you are there for us. We know that you are listening. We know that you are there to answer our prayers, to keep us from feeling a sense of loneliness, a sense of isolation, God. And so I pray that with everyone here today, that they're able to just be reminded that your presence is never ending and that your peace is ever flowing, God. Be 
with me as I, as I speak today, Lord, and just thank you for everything you're doing in our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, for those who don't know, I was voluntold for this. Um, and I was, I was really struggling because I don't do this. But in trying to figure out what to speak about, I ended up going back to one of my favorite passages that I read when I was um, first beginning my walk with Christ. So I need two friends to help me read um, 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 8 to 18. So we'll split it in half. Two brave friends. That's not my boyfriend. Two, okay, Damien. <laughs> Damien, you can do 8 to 12, 8 to 13. 2 Kings chapter 6. Damien will do 8 to 12, and I need someone to do 13 to 18. Yes! <laughs> someone get her a Bible. <laughs> and then let me know when you guys are ready. Ready? Uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8 to 18. Damien will read 8 through 12. And then I know your name, but I forgot your name. Alicia will read 13 to 18. Go ahead, Damien. Amen. Thank you. The title of my sermon is called, I See It. <laughs> Woo, I see it. So, do you ever feel like you're just missing something? Like you're here, but like you're stuck. There's no progression. There's no forward direction. Do you ever ask God, what am I not seeing? What fear may I be so focused on that hasn't made room for anything else to come into my life? What am I not making space for because I'm so blinded? I think from this passage, we can see that there are three different perspectives. There's one of Elisha's servant, and sometimes we may be him, right? We may have the faith. We know that God is good. We know that he's with us. He's for us. But sometimes in the face of adversity, in the face of danger, 
We're not sure what's going to happen. We're not sure that, that everything we learned is actually going to come to fruition, that he'll actually come through. Other times, we might be the army, so focused on righting the wrongs of others that we'll do anything to get justice. And we'll do anything to get what's rightfully ours. But sometimes what God has to do is step in and physically stop us in our tracks, blind us with his presence, and send us on the path that he has prepared for us and not the one that we tried to make for ourselves. I want to encourage you and remind you that sometimes the enemy is not just Satan, but if we're not careful, it's our own minds, it's our own hearts. I have a video. <laughs> that when I saw this on Instagram, but I found it on YouTube, it really reminded me of this passage. This is a abbreviated version. Feel free to find the full length version, but play it. I love that video. It's great. You see where I'm going with this? That little goose all by his lonesome was Elisha and his servant. Those bulls were the strong, powerful army that was trying to destroy him because Elisha and God just kept ruining his plans. But if you see, it doesn't matter how close the enemy may get because God is still intervening for you. God still has his army around that army, and no one can touch you if you're in God's presence, if you know that you're in God's presence. So I want to encourage you on that. Another thing I learned from this video is that it could be such a waste of a testimony if, if we were to just tell everyone how we were almost attacked, how scared we were, but forget that there was someone who intervened for us, someone who came and stepped in to ensure our safety and our peace. That there's a reason why I'm standing in front of you today, and his name is Jesus. Um, for those who may be skeptical of videos like that, I have my own story, um, which you don't even know about, so surprise for you. Um, on Valentine's Day of this year, I think, yeah. You know, I was looking all cute, feeling myself, and you know, we were just spending the day together, my boyfriend and I, and time had escaped me, and it was like a little late. By a little late, I mean like 10.30. But my neighborhood gets sketchy after 10.30, right? So <laughs> I get off the train, you know, I'm clicking my heels, walking as fast as I can down the sidewalk, and there's this, you know, strange man on one side of the sidewalk. So what do girls do? They usually cross to the other side. I cross to the other side. At some point, he like notices me and decides to cross and rock, walk right towards me. And obviously I was scared, that's a scary situation. But then the strangest thing literally happened where he walked right in front of me and looked like he was about to stop in front of me and then he just kept walking away. And I was like, that must be God. <laughs> because there's no way that this man who probably had intentions for something else would just divert his path last minute. That is the story of my testimony. That is the story of God surrounding his army around me and keeping me safe, even when it doesn't look like I may be safe. So I just want to encourage you guys that there is a third perspective to this story, and it's the story of Elisha. That he knew personally and he believed wholeheartedly and he saw through it all that even though you may be surrounded, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is surrounding those who surround you. Do you see it? And don't be afraid to put that into practice. You know, pray those prayers that feel outrageous. Step out in, a, in faith in a way that glorifies God. And live each day knowing that you need not fear because you are literally protected by the God who is, who was, and who is to come. Let's pray. God, I pray that you perfect our vision. I pray that when 
there's blinders in our way, when there's mud in our face, that we still see you, who you are, and what you have promised for us, God. May we never forget that in each and every moment you are protecting us. May we be so bold and so brave as to share our testimonies of where you brought us from to others so that they may know that you are the God who is for us and never against us. May we rest in your presence. May we rest in your perfect peace, knowing that we have nothing to fear. And may you remind us each and every day of these things, God. Keep us close, Lord, and may we never falter. May we never waver. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Short, right? Sometimes people say it's going to be short, and they don't mean it. But I was, yeah. And now I'm going to pass it to Damien. Hey, Beck, thank you so much for that cast. You know, I, I heard um, somebody once said, blessed is she that uh, speaks quick, for she'll be asked to speak again. So I'm looking forward to hearing you speak again. And uh, to the regular MyGen members, don't get used to that. Um, when Dudley comes back, you can, you know, don't look at the clock. We'll be here a little bit longer. But um, that's in love. We still love him. Amen.